very successful company he runs with Jennifer as well as AJ. They're really active on the Zoogle Slack and the community overall. I'm so glad he agreed to do this session really quickly after hearing some of the news that, that, uh, that we all know that's happened. So thank you again for being a strong computer to community, but also running the session for us. But, um, you're right. Over to you now. Yeah. Thanks for the intro, Chris. And thanks, everybody, for making the time. Um, so up to five years ago, my entire career was pretty much full-time roles. And while I really enjoyed the, you know, the work I was doing, for me, it was in product management. I, I noticed that a big chunk of my day was around things that I enjoyed less. Uh, it was full of meetings and perf reviews and navigating the org. So I could not have imagined back then the world of opportunities that would open for me as I entered the world of consulting. Um, I now feel like I have a much better control over my time. Um, I have a choice of the pe great people I work with, uh, as you met AJ and Jen here, and also the choice of projects I work on. Um, so a little bit about uh, you know about the team and Flexon. Um, as AJ and Jen shared earlier, Flexon is a product development company uh, started started by the four of us. Uh, actually, Jen and AJ are both long-term ex-Googlers uh, that joined me as co-founders um, as well as Ina. And we started about five years ago. Uh, since then, we've been building a lot of products. Uh, we've been working with both with uh, many startups to build their product as well as some larger companies like Zapier, Google, Stripe. And we've been really fortunate uh, working a lot with the Zoogler community. Uh, we have a lot of Zoogler founders or uh, Zoogler leaders in orgs that invited us to work with them. Um, and of course, we also have Zooglers that join uh, our company, uh, so we, which we've been really, really happy about. Uh, we've been doing it for five years, and I thought I'll share with you today my journey into that, um, and then also the learnings. Um, and of course, feel free to add uh, questions to the Dory, and you know, AJ, Jen, and I will gladly answer. So. Um, the way I started is, as I mentioned, I was a full-time employee for most of my career. I was really interested in starting my own company or doing something different, I guess, in, in a way. Um, I Most of my friends were Googlers, um, so I started connecting with them and working together. Uh, we were trying to figure out what, what was the right idea to work on. Uh, we had a lot of product ideas, actually, uh, too many. And we were not sure what's, you know, what's going to work or not going to work. So while we're... While we're exploring this and kind of checking out the market, we started getting a lot of invitation for people who just wanted, um, they already had a project going and they just wanted our help. You know, they, they had something going, they maybe raised some money or um, just wanted to explore it further. And what we decided is like, hey, while we're exploring our ideas, let's, let's help them, you know? And that's, that's pretty much what, um, to me, is like what the last five years have been about, you know, people who have kind of real business problems and, Either they know us or we refer to us, and we get to work with them and help them solve that. Some of the things you know I learned through it, like some of the benefits of consulting that I've discovered through it, right? So um, I mentioned from the beginning, like um, feels a lot more control over the setup, like how you spend your time and who you work with. Uh, for example, if you um, in the beginning we only wanted to work part time, we only wanted to work twenty hours because we're working on our own products. So you can set it up like that. Um, you can, a lot of people, it's important to work remotely. So that's another thing that could be part of that. And then um, you, you even, to some degree, you have control over your income, you know, because you set your rates. Of course, there's somebody else who needs to pay them, but uh, you do, you are very flexible in how you set it up, you know? Uh, so that part is, is great. The other part I, re I really enjoy is actually spending, spending time on really solving the problem. Uh, so... I think when you're coming in as a consultant to an organization, you're not you're not up for promotion. You're not um, in a way of anybody's promotion or anything like that. You you actually really get a chance to focus on the work and deliver great work, and the value you provide is based on that work. So you, you actually get a lot of time to to perfect the art that you actually enjoy, you know, and. Um, is then because of that actually you're able to move a lot faster. So. Many organizations we joined, uh, you know, we worked with with Google in the past to launch something. We've done it in eight weeks. Uh, we launched the basically a device that sits in micro kitchens and provide feedback uh, called Foodback. And the reason we were able to move so fast, you know, is is because uh, we actually don't have all those constraints that comes with a large organization. 
Um, coming in externally, you typically have some fresh, some good perspective that can actually help a lot of companies that don't with people that did not come from necessarily from the same background. Um, one example there was that during in the beginning of the pandemic, we worked with a company that was very centralized and they were looking to go remote and just didn't have the experience of working remotely because the whole thing was set up to be co-located. Uh, so being able to come with a fresh perspective, noticing basic things like, hey, you really want to have a single place for all of you to chat and you know you, you want to have a knowledge based system and things like that that really help them um, work remotely with each other we were able to have a really big impact you know in a very short time that that felt really good um, the work has tons of variety i think in the last the last year i've been working on fintech healthcare you know web3 and crypto ai e-commerce uh, many different projects and you know, that's really exciting. Uh, at least for me, I've been learning a lot. Um, I think AJ, AJ and I will always remember the time we learned everything there is to know about wedding dresses. Uh, we were working with a company that was doing custom wedding dresses. And, you know, we learned how to construct them and stuff like this. It was really interesting. And lastly, I want to say that opportunistically, actually, the market right now is actually kind of exploding for um, opportunities like that. Um, many companies are are posting, uh, there's a lot more contracting and consulting kind of jobs out there right now. So it's actually an interesting time to try it. Um, and then um, I, I read, I, I, don't, I tried to find an exact stat, but I think the it's it's about like somewhere between 20% to 100% increase in the last, you know, six months uh, in, in these kind of jobs. So it's kind of interesting, whatever the increase is, it's been growing fast. Um, and, so and the other the other part is that you actually are part of a network here where having a lot of like super talented people to start the, to start your business with to partner with to work with so that's also another big part of the opportunities because you actually have the network you have the community you know the, the, by being here by being part of this other network um i'll take a quick pause here like um aj jen is there anything i i missed no, I think it's, yeah, I would think it's, it's been really helpful and fun to, you know, go really, really, um, you know, kind of have a wider breadth in terms of the industries. Uh, kind of when I noted before, like, you know, I had gone very deep in ads targeting at Google and payments at Stripe. And, you know, I've never worked in healthcare and consumer and crypto. And it's been really fun, like getting into all of that while working at Quixon. I'm still excited about the wedding dress project. If anybody wants to geek out on, on how to, uh, build a system that lets you design a wedding dress from like millions or billions of possibilities. Um, we can talk about it. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Um, some things to be mindful of, um, I guess, as you, as you go into this. So, so there's um, in consulting um, and contracting and many types of this kind of gig roles, you, you are responsible for your own benefits. Uh, it's it's not a big deal. Like you can take care of it, but you are you are the one who owns things like you know the healthcare and four hundred one k. So you you have to think through those things. Income can be bumpy, especially when you start when you're starting out and you don't yet have this kind of pipeline of opportunities that is coming your way, or people are just discovering that you're doing this. Uh, so there could be some ups and downs. So you need to be ready for that. Um, the Finding projects, um, at least for me, was a very new skill. Uh, basically, it's not something I had to do in large companies or in or other organizations. So that that also takes some ramp up time. It's it's an interesting work and it's really useful in general. Uh, but it is it is a new skill for many many folks. Um, go ahead, Samaya. Yeah. Hi. Uh, so. Is there anyone who's on like H1B visa who has figured out how to move from like a full time to like a consulting gig and has actually made, made it happen? Um, I don't have this uh, necessarily information, um, so yeah. Okay. But um, I, I think there's actually Chris is organizing some sessions and helps around that topic. Is that is that correct, Chris? Um, yep, we will have some information. I can send you a couple of things. One, we have a venture capitalist who has offered to connect people with H-1B visas to NTT in the U.S. that sponsors visas. Two, we have a couple of immigration lawyers who have offered their uh, time to answer questions. 
And then three, we also have a venture capital firm that can help people who want to be founders and be hired by the company that they co-found. Okay, sweet. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, I'll follow up with you, Chris. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Um, so going back to the things you might fall off. So the, the the last two for me is like you you get you need to set your own guardrails around um, hours, vacations, leaves. Uh, so these are things you can you can totally have leaves or work as many hours as you'd like, uh, but you need to be careful, you know, not to overdo it. Um, and lastly, I would say, you know, in the beginning, when you start, it's very easy to take any project that comes your way. But over time, you kind of realize what's a good fit or not a good fit. And it's really important to know when, hey, this is like not the type of work I want to do, or it's not a fit for this, for where I want to grow. So um, I'd say that uh, that's, that's another kind of skill you'll be developing throughout consulting. Um, a few of the things that I've been hearing a lot that I, I, I call them myths, but, you know, I've been hearing them a lot and I, I don't think they're very accurate. Um, so the, the major thing is um, a lot of people feel like, oh, I, I have to have a full-time job because I have to have health insurance. Like, especially if you're in the U.S. and you know that, like, health care can be expensive. So for us, like, yeah, health, like health insurance is important and you definitely should have it in the U.S., uh, but I would say that you can you can buy it yourself. Like when we started, you you just pay for your own health insurance. Um, and when when you when you think about it, if you work for a startup and they are paying your health insurance, in a way, it's part of the comp. Like they're um, not to be too crude about it, but like they're lowering your salary by two thousand dollars, and they use these two thousand dollars to buy the health insurance. They they're, they're not getting it for free either, right? So. Uh, in consulting, typically, you'll be charging more and you'll be buying it yourself. And I think the nice thing about it is that you really get a choice of the type of health insurance you buy. So um, you, instead of being part of some package that was pre-organized, like you, you really get the freedom to buy the one that's best fit for you. Uh, the other one is that uh, consulting may make you less competitive. So I think I mentioned before, there's a lot of great skills you can gain uh, through consulting that are actually, in my opinion, make you a lot more competitive. Uh, there's a lot of focus on communication, communicating your work. Um, again, like new, um, the variety of industries you know about, the variety of techniques you know about, I think um, it's it's actually a plus. It's a huge plus. If consultants only get low quality work. Um, so I can share from our experience, you know, we've been building the front main products for whole companies before uh, we've placed folks that were CTOs uh, or fractional CTOs or full CTOs of companies as well as uh, CPOs. So it's definitely not the case that consultants necessarily get low quality work. A lot of it is how you communicate the value you bring and finding the right fit for for the for your skills. Uh, number the fourth one is the project and engagements are short term. So. Um, again, I don't, I don't think it's necessarily true. We've been, there's companies we've been working with like with for three or four years. Um, it really depends on the projects and the kind of um, the kind of engagements you're entering. Uh, sometimes it's fun for you to be short because you just want to learn a little bit and move on. And sometimes it can continue for a while. So, and the last one is that uh, you will earn less money. So I think um, in general, consulting like. Being, being on this kind of hourly in the consulting is actually paying a lot more than full time. Uh, there could be a challenge about filling all your time. So that's definitely something, as I mentioned, as you get started and you don't necessarily have the pipeline, maybe not all your time is full. But on average, I, I would say that, um, yeah, I would say it can be better to actually kind of earn your own and then you get to spend it on this stuff separately. Like you buy your own health insurance, you buy your own stuff. and. Um, so that has been my experience, at least. I'm happy to answer questions about it in the door as well. And so as one thinks about whether consulting is uh, the right path for you or not, so um, these are some questions that I would have in mind. You know, um, are, you, are you one that really enjoy um, going really deep on one topic and doing it for two, three years? You know, Jen, you mentioned um, ad, ad targeting, right? So you've been doing it for many years and you know a lot about um, or do you enjoy more in this in this phase having a variety, going to a few industries or a few different projects? I'm learning like that. So that's that's one key decision. The other one is, um, you know, how much how much control you want or need on your time. Uh, what variability are you willing to accept there? And then similarly about your risk tolerance and variability you can have with your income. 
Um, I think in general, there you have the potential to earn more, but like there'll be times where you earn less. So you have to be comfortable with that. Um, and lastly, if, if it is something you want to try, I do think I do think it's a really interesting time to give it a shot, actually, because um, the market for contract jobs increased significantly. And um, as I said, you have this great network of people to connect with. Um, and what are the first steps? So I would say the most important is to figure out what's the area where you most sought after, you know, what's the area of expertise. Um, in a way, you are the product. So, for example, for AJ, AJ was leading engineering teams, and for me, it was product and design. So, it was very natural for people to say, "Hey, you know, we have this. Um, you know, we're building this thing. We need an, we need more help on engineering or architecture, design, engineering design, um, and invite AJ to join that when we first started, or for me around product. So, it, it's very natural when you find the right skills uh, that people would love to hire you for, and then. Um, the first projects are very likely going to come from people you know. Uh, so your immediate network of friends, of colleagues, um, the Zoogler network, that's just the easiest way and the fastest way to find the first role. Um, th there's a lot of trust going with that, and you can start really fast. And um, lastly, a big part of it is like expanding your network, uh, which again, I'm another plug for the Zoogler network that has been phenomenal for us um, as, a, as a great network of, to meet new people, we made a lot of new friends throughout this journey, and um, I think it's a great opportunity for you to collaborate with folks. Um, in fact, I think after uh, we're going to jump to a Q&A first, but after that, I, I would love to start um, actually right here to start meeting each other. So we build this virtual world called Pluto, and uh, we can go ahead and like try to meet and network with more people over there uh, from this group that is here. And, but before that, let's do the Q&A first. That works for everybody. Right. Um, Jen, do you want me to present or do you have it ready? Yeah, I can I can present. Thanks. And uh, in the, while while we're loading this, um, AJ, is there anything uh, you wanted to add? Anything I missed? Oh, I was thinking it's been, it's been really exciting to just not necessarily to to I mean, it's, it's great working across many different projects, but one of the things that's really fun is like having some expertise and like being able to apply it and really make a difference. Um, there's so many times where we ran into problems where people just stuck and we can come in with a different way of looking at it. Some, um, I guess, fundamental like first principles approaches to software engineering and product design and be like, well, why don't you do this? And they're like, oh, <laughs> uh, so it's, it's always really fun. Yeah. Um, so the first question is around um, how to think about um, basically con concerned in services and rates and prices, um, especially compared to the previous role at Google. So I can get started. I would love your would love your thoughts as well, like Jen. But I, I would say for me, the the most important feedback on this has been from the market actually. So when when you start, you don't know. You actually, it's very hard to know exactly the value, um, and you you can look look you can look up other roles in the area, but it's very individualized uh, because in the end of the day, you know, you're bringing some kind of skills that not anybody can bring. So, set, um, I would say experimentation is really important to to figure out the right number. Um, I, yeah, I, I will say that like you know, with Google Google Comp is kind of complex because you have the the base salary, the the stock, you have the kind of the total comp, you have the stock, you have the bonuses. So it depends on what portion of it you mean. Uh, but, I, but I would say that um, it's very easy. I, I would say it's very likely and very easy to get more than your base. Uh, but if you've been working at Google for four years and you've been accumulating a lot of stock, and basically the payout this year includes the last three years of service for the same company, um, then maybe that's not a fair comparison to what you can be paid right away. Yeah, what I heard from some people is they take their base salary. Uh, so I don't know, sometimes they take in some stock options as well. It kind of depends on um, the company. And then you back it out what your hourly rate is, and then you actually you can double it because you're also paying for your own insurance and other things like that. So, Because um, many times when you're doing consulting, they're asking for your hourly rate. 
And so you basically find out what is your current hourly rate and you definitely have to add on top of it because you'll be um, <clears throat> paying your own health insurance there. Um, another way of doing it is there's a lot of platforms out there where people are, you know, posting their own rates or looking for work or posting jobs and saying what, what they're willing to pay. So like Upwork, you know, is one of those examples and you can go there and kind of explore and you'll see there's a pretty wide range, um, you know, in terms of what people are offering or, you know, wanting people to pay for them. And you can always compare yourself against your expertise and, you know, number of years experience against those people to get an idea of that. Yeah. Um, all right, maybe we can go to the next one. Uh, I think I can take that one. So um, how should you set it up as an LLC? How do you set up consulting agencies, the LLC, S Corp? I would say if you start by yourself, the kind of the fastest way to start a company in the US is an LLC. Um, you just like, it's uh, really straightforward. There's, um, it's pretty inexpensive in terms of taxes, pretty inexpensive. The, so so uh, um, S Corp, S Corp, uh, basically we started as an LLC and we're now an S Corp. Um, S Corp is just a step you take after your, I would say, after a certain size. Uh, but you probably don't want to start with an S Corp because there's a lot of fees associated with structuring it like that. Um, but yeah, LLC is a great way to start, uh, whether you do it by yourself or with friends. And it's a pretty simple entity. And I'm, I'm happy to answer more about uh, about that as well. How do you find your, your clients? Is it mainly word of mouth? Um, so yeah, so for us, it's been pretty much only word of mouth. Um, no sales function. We're experimenting with one right now, but until now we had no sales function, uh, no marketing. So it's been only through our network, through word of mouth. So um, yeah, projects like the Zuber community, our immediate friends, people who know us. Yeah, one thing to note is like once you actually get it started, it actually kind of helps build on top itself. So like eventually, like a lot of our clients came from recommendations from existing or past clients. And those are kind of like the best referrals because, you know, it's someone else telling them like, hey, I use Fluxon and they're great. Like you should use them. And we found those to be kind of like the strongest referrals for, for our new clients. Yeah. Basically like do, doing good work is actually a part of your referral network because then your customer actually becomes your referral. Many times they'll say like, hey, you know, I have this person, like this project is about to offer. Like they, they'll find you your next job almost. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, Consulting my own freelance versus joining a consulting company. Um, so, I mean, I mean, I uh, when I was talking, when I'm speaking about consulting, I was I was thinking about it very generically. Uh, basically, uh, I included freelance consulting individually. Consulting is part of an agency. Um, I think that that question is very. Um, I would say um, it's very subjective to where you are. Um, there's a lot of like, by starting your own, you, you can have a lot more benefit. Um, you can actually build your own kind of practice in a way. So there's a lot more upside, but then of course it's a lot more risky in the beginning. If you join something that exists, you're taking a little bit less of the risk, uh, but then kind of the momentum of like the risk reward goes down a little bit. So maybe your, um, maybe you know, your, you know, your comp has a different trajectory than for example, starting your own. Um, yeah, it really depends. Uh, it's a very, it's a very convenient and easy way to start through a company uh, if you have that. Uh, but otherwise, otherwise starting your own is also, it could be just as interesting. Yeah. I think like joining consulting company, like, um, there is a little bit of, you know, the nice thing is you'll get like a, the steady salary. So you don't have to, you know, worry about finding work. And I think the biggest thing is you don't have to worry about finding work because usually other people in the firm are responsible for that. The only downside is you don't have a lot of control over the projects that may come. You know, generally, like at Fluxon, we definitely try to match people with their interests. But sometimes if it's like you're the only person that's not staffed on a project and that project comes in, um, then, you know, you're likely will be put on that project. But if it's, you know, you're doing it on your own, you can pick and choose exactly and who you want to work with. Yeah. And you also get to work as part of a team when you're a consulting company. You can, you know, at Fluxon, we have you know, PMs and engineers and TPMs and designers. And so you get to work as part of a team and get to work with like, you know, that set of team like over and over again. Yeah. Um, so next question is around, um, is, it, is it done as an IC or a small or a t a managing teams? And it, it can really be both, you know? So when we started, we did it more in, as individuals, actually, we, we ourselves did the work. Um, by by building it as a company, we're able to start building teams that will do the work and deploy whole teams. 
So I think that that's that's another part that makes it really interesting because you can actually, in many, if you take a project, in many cases, you do have the autonomy to hire folks that can help you throughout. So let's say there's parts of the projects that you know are better better fit for a different skill, or or you think like, hey, I can work on the main thing, but the, this other part I can actually um, get somebody else to do. You know, if it's something you're not as interested in, so you you actually have this flexibility. So it's pretty cool. Um, AJ, you're not in. Do you want to add anything to that? I was going to say when we started, like you were the the sole product person. I was the sole engineer, and we had projects, and we just did them, and it was fun. Um, and then being able to grow the team was really exciting. Now having been doing it for several years, it's like I'm so proud of the people that we work with. Like, it's it's um, it's the number one blessing is to have built a team and to be working with such great people across the world. Yeah. Um, so how do you constantly sell yourself or beat out other consulting firms? So, um, they, so it's really interesting because on the one hand, there's there's plenty of consulting firms, you know, there's no shortage. And we're in the product development, and they're, they're, we are unique in our own way. But at the same time, it's, it's a service that exists, right? Uh, but I would say that through your network uh, and through the trust, you can actually still get projects. I mean. I think when you think at the level of, um, if you were Accenture, you'd have to think through this question really deeply. But if you're just starting out and your friends need help, like of, of course they should hire you. You know, they know you, they know of your work. There's no, there's no competition really. Like you're not competing with anybody. You're competing with yourself, like whether you want to or not to take this project. Uh, that, that at least has been my experience. Um, and and happy if if, the, if uh, some of our answers don't answer your question and you're on the call, please feel free to raise hand and jump in. And um, let's do a few more because I, I don't know if Jen is there a lot. Yeah. Okay. Let's do a few more. Maybe we can spend some time going to Pluto as well. Um, what's the next one? Um, consulting is high risk compared to stability, staying house full time role. Um, so I think um, it can be, especially when you're starting out. Uh, it's because basically you, you do have to build a new skill of getting the, this basically pipeline of projects and finding uh, the right things. But over time, as you build a base of clients, like it's actually not as risky. Um, I don't know, Jen, if you, you'd agree to that or what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, like, I think there is, I think once you have established a customer base, it's not as risky. Um, I think the one thing that to consider is generally when there is an economic downturn, generally, the, and you guys probably see this at Google too, is like, first, what happens is they freeze hiring, and then they first let go of like more contractors and vendors, and then they start doing laying off of their own folks. And so in that sense, it is can be a little bit more risky in terms of um, being a consultant or a vendor. Yeah. Um, how do you scale a consulting uh, consulting business which relies on a lot of human resources? So, yeah, I've been um, I've been hearing that a lot actually, um, and I think that if you think of like product com the product companies don't scale based on the number of people. And um, it's, it has been my experience that product companies are also scaling through people. They do need to hire people to maintain the services and run them, and um, they they can be quite large. Um, in fact, when you, for many companies, if you kind of divide the, let's call it revenue by number of employees, like it's it's, um, or any type of measurability of profit or revenue by the number of employees, it's actually uh, typically lower than. Um, or around the same areas. I mean, there's exceptions to that, but it's similar to product companies. So it, as an example, it's not like when um, you know Slack is built and they have this revenue, they, they now don't need any engineering teams or something like that. Like they, they still all need very large support teams. So you would say that the service like and support teams for these types of SaaS companies are gigantic. Yeah. So there's exception to that, but but I would say that um, as far as I can tell, most businesses in the world scale by number of people. There's no like really huge business if you look at Fortune 500 and they have three people on the team. So um, 
did any of it doing consulting on your own for incorporating Flexon? Um, so AJ, you want to answer that since you? I, I was doing like a, some very, very minor side projects. And um, I got an email one day from Murad, like, hey, we should work together. And I said, yeah, let's do it, you know? Um, and the legal part was really easy because we knew each other very well. We trusted each other. We, we thought through a lot of things um, around, I guess, extenuating circumstances. Like what if one of us gets really sick or something and can't work anymore? We thought through all of those things, um, but it was like reciprocal, you know? So if it's good for him, it's good for me and vice versa. And then as we began to work more with other, uh, with the rest of our partners, um, Jen and Ina, it made sense to just, we didn't need to change any of that. Yeah. Well, it wasn't tricky legally at all, I would say, <laughs> but, but because we were such close relations, maybe. Um, so your thoughts about pricing hourly versus project basis. So in, two thoughts about this. So the, fir the first one is that um, in many in many projects, um, I think both are fine actually, and it really depends on your client. But but I would say that um, typically people tend to underestimate the the continuity of what they'll need. So some people think, hey, can you can you help me with like three engineers? And then after the product is done, I'm going to go to zero engineers. And maybe it can work, but but it doesn't often work like that. So it is good to have these open discussions ahead of time. And that's why it is good to have some kind of um, ongoing basis pricing, not just for, for the project, because things tend to continue after, especially if they work out well. So the project work out well, they want to continue working with you, right? And um, and in terms of our, um, so we, we actually we actually moved, we started thinking about ours because a lot of the industry thinks around ours. Uh, but but really we've been uh, we've been moving towards weekly. Um, it's you you want to create your own stability in a way, and it's very hard to like hey I'm gonna count exactly I worked like you know 3.5 hours and this week and 5.5 hours next week, and it is possible and some people want that to start, but over time it is much better to have this agreement of like the level of effort you're gonna provide every week. Uh, so th that has been our experience moving more toward toward weekly. Uh, but of course, the industry works as hourly basis, so it's just easier to work like that sometimes. Oh, I, yeah. I, I bet. Usually, uh, you know, client wants to know roughly the overall project cost, so we usually we create um, some sort of roadmap, you know, a project plan. We do estimate it, but leave it open so that if they change their mind or they would like to continue later on, they have the flexibility to do that. Yeah, I think it's generally much better and also safer to do it like pricing per hour versus on a per project basis. I think maybe you guys will see this many times when you are working at Google, you think something's going to take like, you know, X weeks to build, but then it takes much longer. Um, you know, working with a lot of clients, you know, what we've seen is many times they think they have it, you know, pretty fully scoped out. But then, you know, as you kind of dig into the details, there's a lot of things that aren't like really detailed out and, you know, you have to spend a lot of time scoping in, figuring out like, hey, is this actually the best like, you know, payment provider that you want to integrate with versus another one? Um, and then the other thing is sometimes they'll tell you they want you to build one thing, but then they kind of change their mind over time and start pivoting towards another idea. And if you're just costing it just on like a per project basis, you know, it can end up where you're spending a lot of time just on that per project and, you know, spending a lot more hours in what you expected to do from the very beginning. Yeah. When you see that happening, it's pretty important to remind them, you know, overall timeline that they had in mind, like this change is going to lead to an extension to the timeline, make sure they're okay with that, write it down, you know. Yeah. Um, let's do one more question. So we cover all the tools and then we'll leave the ones alone and try maybe try the networking opportunity. Um, so the next one is, um, is it better to set up an LLC in the state you reside in or Delaware? So. I think it's probably like a question for lawyers, but I would say that um, our experience has been that you have to start it in your own state, right, AJ, if it's an LLC? I actually can't remember. I know we're a California LLC, but I, and I, I remember like we discussed whether or not we should be a Delaware corporation mm -hmm. and we settled on California, but I, I don't remember why. Okay. No, because I think, I, I, think think I think even if you do Delaware, you still, and you live in, Cali in our example, we live in California. Even if you have a Delaware entity, but if you live in California, you also need a California one. So it's not either Delaware or California. It's like both or one of them. 
Um, and there's some costs associated with both. But again, you should probably speak to somebody who knows more about it. And, and yeah. from, my, from my understanding, if you're not raising VC, then there's less of a reason to incorporate in Delaware. Yeah. Yeah, there's some great questions here. So what we can do is we can answer them in Dory and you know, mm. we're, sh we're sure they link out later. And so if people want to later come back to Dory, they can see uh, some of the answers that we provided um, to some of the questions here that we didn't get uh, get to today. Yeah, that'd be great. So for, for the, you know, we have 15 minutes le uh, left and, and I think like, um, you know, and if you have to go, that's okay. But if you, if you have a chance to spend this 15 minutes with us, we wanted to go to, um, as I said, we, we build this like 3D virtual world that allows people to network and get to know each other. Um, we, I, we expressed quite a few times the importance of uh, building your network and meeting other people, <laughs> the metaverse. So um, we'd love, we'd love if you can join us there. Um, you can navigate with the arrow keys. You, the main thing is you'll need to allow for microphone and audio. So we'll probably mute here and go there. And yeah, if you have any challenges, like let, with logging in or anything, let us know. I just pasted the link to it. And um, yeah, we'd love to, we'd love to see you there and just you know chat kind of in a one-on-one -on -one setting. Yeah, just make sure when you go there to exit and exit the Google Meets because maybe there may be some sound and um, interference there. So yeah, we'll see everybody in Pluto. Thank you.